Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about string literals and this kind of extends on from strings which we talked about last episode so if you guys haven't seen that click on the card or the link in the description below. This is just going to be kind of more of an in-depth look at what we looked at in that video. So a string literal is basically a series of characters in between two double quotes. So if we jump in here I can define a string literal by writing double quotes and then something in between them, such as Cherno. There we go, that's a string literal. Now, what this actually becomes depends on a number of factors. At the very basic case, what this actually is, if you hover your mouse over this, is a const char array of size seven. Now, straight away, you may notice that there's actually only six characters here, right? Why is it a const char array of seven? The reason that's the case is because there is actually one extra character at the very end of that string, and that is a null termination character, which if we were to write manually, would look like this, a backslash zero, or alternatively, it can just be expressed as an actual zero. And the reason this is needed is to signal the end of a string. Once you run into a zero, not the character zero, if we write the character zero, that actually has a different numeric value value altogether. If you write a backslash zero though, that is what that null character is, an actual numerical zero. That zero signals the end of the string. So if we, if we were to do something like put that backslash zero in the middle of our string, we would actually break the behavior of this string in many cases. Let's take a look at the standard C library for a bit. I'll just include standard lib.h, which includes some C functions. If I assign this to something now, if we hover our mouse over this, you can see that it's a const char eight. So I might just assign it to that. Const char name, we'll put eight over here. If I put a breakpoint over here, hit F5, I can, I can inspect my memory. If I type in the name of the string, which is name, you can see that I'm just gonna make this have like 16 columns. Okay, so you can see that we have Cherno printing over here. We have kind of two dots here in the ASCII representation, which represents the two zeros. Now the length of this string, if you actually count the characters, is going to be seven because this backslash zero is an escaping character, means it just counts as one character. However, this is set to eight because we actually have an implicit backslash zero at the very end, whoops. We have an implicit backslash zero at the very end here, which signals the end of our string. So if I want to actually see what my string is by perhaps running sterlin, which is a C function, which will, will basically tell me how long my C string is, I'll pass in name as my string and we'll see what value that prints. You can see that we actually get the value three printing here. However, of course, Cherno is way longer than three characters. The reason for that is because it only counts the characters up until that backslash zero, because as soon as it runs into zero, it thinks that's it, that's the end of the string. If we remove that zero and rerun this code, of course, we'll get six, which is the length of that string and not eight, which is actually what the array happens to be right now. So at its core type, this is a const char array. However, we can also assign it to a const char pointer. That's totally fine. The const here promises that you won't be manipulating the string. So I won't be able to do something like name two equals a, right? Because it's marked as const. Now, if I remove const, this appears to be possible. And I actually accidentally said that it was in the previous strings video. However, it's not. Well. It might be. It's something called undefined behavior, which basically means that the C++ standard doesn't define what should happen in this case. So some compilers may generate valid code for this, but you can't rely on that. So basically this is banned. Other compilers won't even let you compile this code. MSVC, which is Microsoft's Visual Studio compiler, which is what I'm using right now, compiles this with no problems at all. However, compilers such as Clang won't let you compile this code. And the reason that this is undefined and not allowed is because what you've actually done here is you've taken a pointer to the memory location of that string literal. And string literals are stored in a read-only section of memory. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's jump back into our code. I'm going to open up my compiler settings here, make sure that I'm on all configurations. I'll go to C++ and output files and make sure that this is set to assembly with source code in my assembler output. I'll hit okay and I'll switch to release mode over here just to simplify the assembly output and I will build my project. Next, I'm going to go to the output directory for this. So we have release and we have main.asm. This is the main.cpp file, therefore main.asm. I'll drag this into Visual Studio so that we can take a look at the generated assembly code. Over here, you can see a section called const segment and we have this Cherno listed here. What you see here is actually the identifier so that the linker and the compiler can actually reason about this Cherno string, but the data is set over here to Cherno, and then the const segment ends. So basically this string is stored in a const section in our binary. If you open up the exe file that you get from this, first let's change this code to do something a little bit more useful. 
So I'll get it to print out Cherno to the console. That way we're actually using this string so that when we build this in release mode, the compiler won't optimize away our Cherno string. Now if I find the exe file and open it in something such as hxd, which is just a hex editor, you'll see that we literally have Cherno defined here inside our binary. Those characters are embedded into our binary and when we reference this, it's actually referring to a const data segment that we are not allowed to edit. If you do try and edit code like this, even though it will compile just fine, if you do try and edit code like this, in release mode, if I hit F5, you'll see that even though we tried to edit this, it actually didn't work. The third character is still E and not A. Now, if we were to run the same code in debug mode, as soon as we try to actually execute this code, we would get an exception thrown because you can't actually do this. We're trying to write to read-only memory. If you did want to modify this for some reason, you can. You just need to define the type as an array instead of a pointer. And now if we run this code, we can hit F10 and you can see it works just fine. And if we look at our output, here we have Cherno with an A. Please never spell it like that ever. So to sum this up, you cannot write code like this. It's undefined behavior and you should never do it. Other compilers will most likely warn you about this or even just throw an error and prevent you from compiling code like this because you shouldn't be doing this. From C++11 and onwards, some compilers such as Clang will actually only let you compile const char pointer. If you want to compile a char pointer from a string literal such as this, you will actually have to cast it into a char manually. However, MSVC doesn't seem to care at all. It thinks that's fine. So basically, if you declare code like this, you should really always be declaring it as const just to remind yourself that no, you can't actually write code like this. Okay, some other fun facts about characters. We have char, of course, as a one byte type. However, there is also something called wchar underscore t, which is called a white character. Now, Let's just go over the types really quickly. So we have a wide character pointer, I'll call this name two. If we try and set this equal to Cherno, we'll get an error because it actually needs a capital L appended to the front of it. This signifies that the following string literal is made up of wide characters. C11 also introduced a number of other types such as char16 underscore t, which again, you'll need to set equal to a lowercase u and then in quotes, your text, don't forget the pointer. And then we also have a char32 underscore t name four, which has an uppercase u and your text. You can also define the normal const char one with a u8 prefix like this, if you really want to enforce that. And there are compiler settings which control whether a char or a w char is used. There are a lot of things we could talk about. Again, I don't wanna really go into this too long. I wanna keep this brief. But basically, a char is of course a one byte per character thing. A char 16 is a two byte per character, a 16 bit per character string. And then we have 32, which is 32 bits per character or four bytes per character. This is basically made to adhere with, with UTF-32. This one's made to adhere with UTF-16. And then we have UTF-8, which is const char. Now, the question is, what is, it, what is the difference between W char and char 16? Because they appear to both be two bytes. W char is also two bytes per character. Now, the, I keep saying two bytes per character. However, that's actually up to the compiler to decide. It might be one byte, it might be two bytes, it might be four bytes. Now, in practice, it's, I've never seen it to be one byte before. It's usually either two or four. It is two on Windows and four on Linux, and I expect Mac as well. So it is a little bit variable. If you definitely want a two byte string, you can deal with a char 16 t which is always going to be 16 bits or two bytes. Speaking about weird things to prepend to strings, such as UNL, you can actually also append things to strings. So there is something in C14 called std string underscore literals, which give us a number of functions just for convenience. In the previous video about strings, I wrote code such as this. We have std string name zero equals Cherno. And I said that if you wanted to append some other string onto this one, then you actually couldn't do that because these are string literals, of course, which as you can see are arrays or pointers. So we can't just add two pointers together. My solution was to surround this with a constructor to basically make this a string. However, since C14, there is something inside the string literals library, which actually kind of makes that a little bit easier, maybe depending how you look on it. And you can actually just add the letter S to the end of your string. And what this does is it's basically a function. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see it's an operator function that actually returns a standard string. Now, similarly to this, if you were to put U8 at the front, that'd be fine. If you put L at the front, then you get a wide string, which means that this becomes a W string. And this also has to be a wide string. And 
you can also do U and uppercase U to be able to do things like U32 string for various character lengths. So yeah, confused about strings yet? Aren't we all? One other thing that we can actually prepare to string literals is the letter R. So I can write a const char here, and I'll start this off with the letter R out the front. What this means is to ignore escape characters. So in practice, what it's used for, and we actually have to have these parentheses in here, is multi-line string. So if I wanted to have something like line one, line two, line three, line four, it makes life a little bit easier because without this, we would have to either do something like this, where we actually append all of this stuff together, or we could also do const char ex equals line one, and then just simply write line two, line three. You can see that these don't actually have pluses or anything in between them. And additionally, we would actually have to put a backslash n onto each of these to, if we wanted them to actually be on new lines. So this is very common if you want to actually just write a full paragraph of text or maybe some code in your code as a string and you want to be able to define it fairly easily. And this is a lot more work than just being able to write your code freely like this. So R is uh, quite useful and the R stands for raw. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention was again about the memory of string literals and how that works. String literals are always stored in read-only memory, right? Always. Just because we write something like char name with an array and we set it equal to cherno, and then we decide to change something like I did earlier, and we'll print that out to the console. If I actually take a look at the code that this generates, I'll compile this in release mode. I'll open up my directory here and I'll drag in this assembly file into Visual Studio. We'll search for cherno and you can see that cherno is still defined in a const segment. However, we're obviously editing it. So how is that working? Let's scroll down. Okay, great, here is our function. Let's take a look at the code and look at what is happening. We are loading a memory address over here, which is the location of the name variable. Now, if you look a little bit up here, you'll see we have name, which has an offset of minus 12. This is basically a variable that is declared on the stack. Again, this is getting a little bit complicated, so we'll have videos about details on this in the future. But for now, this is our name variable, basically. Its address is being loaded into the EDX register. And we are then moving the cherno, this is the location of that cherno string literal in our read-only memory. We're putting that into the AX register. Again, it's AX, not EAX, because the compiler is trying to do optimizations here. This is release mode, so it might be a little bit hard to read this code. And then we're loading AX into that name variable. So what we've actually done here, basically gotten that, that cherno segment and we've copied it into that name variable. So we've actually created an actual variable here. Before, if we don't write this code, what we're trying to do is modify the pointer that points to that constant data segment. So we're actually trying to write into the constant data. Here, it's created another variable. And you can see on this line here, we move the numeric value 97 into that name variable at an offset of two. That's, that's what this line of code here is doing. 97 is the numerical decimal representation of the character lowercase a. So that's it. That got pretty deep. Hope you understand now how const char pointers and all of that stuff works and string literals in general. It's really important to understand this stuff because you're probably going to be dealing with strings for the rest of your programming career. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you could hit that like button just so that I know that you liked my video. You can also support this series on patreon.com forward slash the channel if you, if you want to. You get some cool rewards such as being able to contribute to the planning of these videos as well as getting these videos early sometimes and seeing drafts and all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.